Hello Wildlanders, SK here. Today, we are learning how to best strike down our enemies in close quarters combat. In this tips video, we are addressing tips and tricks for players that are newer or of moderate experience with the Wildlander mod pack. With melee weapons, the first place to begin is the three different weapon types. There are hammers and maces, which dish out blunt damage. These are the best against certain enemies that aren't prone to being sliced through. A great example would be mud crabs, which have a natural resistance to swords and arrows, but are more easily taken down by a mace smashing through their hardened shell. Another example would be skeletons, which have no skin or organs, and because of this take significantly reduced damage from daggers and swords, but are, however, vulnerable to a hammer to their ribcage. Taking a look at swords, they deal slashing damage. They are a good weapon to carry when attempting to take on a Draugr, as the aged undead leaves their skin much more hardened, but a sharp blade can slice through the skin while a dagger or hammer would deal only half the normal damage. Daggers cause piercing damage, which typically isn't going to be the best option. With this being said, daggers should be used either in combination with sneaking to land a sneak attack, or as a last resort. In one-on-one -on -one combat, daggers are by far the least useful weapon of the melee options since they do the least damage and most enemies in the game heavily resist piercing damage. Lockpicking certainly is a useful skill, but sometimes I don't feel like playing a character with this skill set. The question I ask myself is, how am I supposed to open lock chess? Is lockpicking a requirement at that point? The answer is a resounding no. I don't have to use lockpicking whatsoever, and here's why. There are knock scrolls that can be purchased from mages and some general goods stores which can unlock chests of varying difficulty. The lowest quality knock scroll can still unlock chests of adept or lower difficulty. Knock 3 scrolls can unlock any chest including master level chests. But maybe you're strapped for gold and can't quite afford to purchase a scroll right now. There is some good news. Certain chests can be bashed open with your weapon. Wooden chests up to adept difficulty can be bashed open if you have high enough health and stamina. On screen is the formula if you're trying to plan accordingly. With this being said, any chest with greater than adept difficulty cannot be bashed open, nor can boss chests or steel doors be bashed in this manner to unlock. If you hear a metal on metal noise, this is an indicator that the chest cannot be bashed open. The next tip may be surprising if you are running a two-handed character that doesn't use shields, but I promise all the same it is still very important. Put at least one perk into the block skill tree. Some enemies will just one hit you unless you're blocking. Even with the maximum armor rating, a dragon's claws will tear you to bits without any difficulty. This is where blocking comes in handy. The first perk in the block tree gives the player 25% additional blocking with or without a shield. Adding on to this tip, if you are using a shield, I imagine you are blocking, but if you are using a two-handed weapon and aren't already, blocking enemy attacks is a vital way to stay alive. While some enemies should be dodged and not blocked, most attacks are best blocked. If you are being attacked by a two-handed weapon, I recommend dodging even if you have a shield, as a power attack from a two-handed weapon is likely to either kill you on the spot, or take you to low health in an instant. Additional perks in the block tree can be useful, but keep in mind if the description only mentions a benefit to a shield, it almost certainly doesn't benefit two-handed blocking. This tip is one to be used at character creation. When choosing your race, keep in mind the type of melee character you will be using, and whether or not the race you are choosing will be beneficial. There are a couple races that I highly recommend avoiding. High Elf, due to their power attack costing extra damage, increased damage received from spellcasters, and no benefit to melee abilities whatsoever. Similarly, Wood Elves and Kishi are not great choices for melee characters due to not adding any benefit to melee play. I will add that if you are planning an unarmed character, that Khajiit would actually be a pretty good choice as its claws increase its unarmed damage and its movement speed is naturally faster. Taking a look at the races best for a melee character, while other races are absolutely viable, I highly recommend either Orc or Imperial. Orcs have the lowest cost of power attacks, which 
makes them great heavy swingers, and they can enter a rage that makes their physical damage taken halved and physical damage dealt doubled, taking down even the strongest of enemies. Imperials, on the other hand, naturally have 50 extra stamina, great stamina regeneration, and decreased power attack cost. I would argue they are the best race to choose for a melee character. This final tip is a very important one. All armor has a specific armor rating, also known as AR, and each piece of armor adds to your total AR. AR is beneficial to reduce the total damage taken. There is a maximum damage reduction which is equivalent to 800 AR or 80% reduction in damage taken. Does this mean that there is no point in increasing your armor rating above 800? This is not only incorrect, you will want to increase your AR as high as possible. Quite a number of enemies have weapons with armor penetration. As the name implies, their weapons cancel out a portion of your armor rating. This is where having above 800 armor rating comes in handy. In the event that you have 1000 armor rating and the enemy hits you with a weapon that removes 20% of your armor rating, you would still take damage as if your armor rating was maxed. In other words, you would nullify 80% of your damage taken. Dragons are a great example of an enemy that if you don't have high enough armor rating, they will take you down without giving you the chance to put up a fight. Now, these were the tips planned for this video. Did you learn something new, or was there a tip you recommend that I didn't cover? If so, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, feel free to check out my Mage Tips video. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed, leave a like and consider subscribing. Stay safe, Wildlanders.